Sir, really nice to see you. Thanks, Mike. Love you, buddy. Retrospective. <laughs> oh, my. oh, my goodness gracious. Lupita Murillo. How are you, sweetie? Since it's uh, not quite five o'clock and we've got a full house going on here, uh, if you have no objections, find a seat. We could spill people around a little bit and we can get started early. Because I know you all have a, a dinner date somewhere. <laughs> My name is Tom Philibon. I'm the owner and designer and artist of the Philibon Glass Gallery and Studios. And I've been in Tucson since 1975. I was born in Toledo, Ohio in 1947, and uh, I was pretty much a straight kind of kid. You know, I played in the band, I played in the orchestra, I played in the football team. But once I got into the art program, it was like bib jeans and mud and paint all over me, and I loved it. And then when I went to college, all, I, in my spare time, all I did was draw, draw, draw. The walls, the ceilings, the windows, everything in my dorm room was covered with my drawings. And I was taking sociology and psychology and political science, academic stuff that I wasn't really interested in. And all my friends kept saying, you fool, look around you. Why don't you just do what you love? Oh, now, now we're going backwards. Uh, this painting's from undergraduate school, but I just wanted to show it because it, it shows that I'm, like, I'm still a hot guy. <laughs> After I graduated, I took a job as an art teacher in a town called Belleville, Illinois. I had 11 schools and 3,500 students. I, w I went room to room with boxes full of water and watercolors and pencils and pens. I was nuts. Anyway, at night I would go to, I took graduate classes at Southern Illinois University at Edwardsville. And while I was there, I had a great time working in clay. But my professor said to me, Philibom, your ideas are too fluid for clay. Have you ever thought of working in glass? And my hair went, I stood on end and I went, what do you mean glass? <laughs> he said, well, there's this guy teaching a class up the, up the road in Madison, Wisconsin, named Harvey Littleton, teaching glass in the graduate level. You should look into it. And just like that, I, my life was transformed. I said, I'm going to learn to be a glass blower. I had a love affair with ceramics. I love clay. It's such a wonderful thing to work with. But in clay, everything is like being in the North Woods in the fall. Everything's muted tones and earth colors and stuff. And I wanted red and I wanted yellow and I wanted pink and blue. Many years ago, <laughs> I was a potter. A group of us formed an organization so that we could buy clay, mostly, in bulk. And we were having a meeting one night at one of the people's homes downtown, and this guy showed up, and he came in with his portfolio. And I was showing them my resume, my slides, because I'm Mr. Masters in Art. Well, none of us had a portfolio, I can assure you. And they said to me, you moved here and you don't have any friends? I, I moved to Tucson not knowing anybody. I just knew that this is where I wanted to live. I'm thinking, Oh, how tough to be in a new town and you don't know anyone. <laughs> so <clears throat> Dabney leaned out and she looked at me and she said, I'll, I'll be, be your, your friend. friend. <laughs> and as soon as I said it, I went, oh, what a stupid thing to say. <laughs> yeah. Oh, darn it, because he was so cute. And I did want to be his friend. <laughs> but <laughs> and we've been together for 40 years. One of the things that, you, that I really like about glass is that it almost promotes risk-taking. 
because it's dangerous, it's hot, you can get burned, you can get cut. There's a, an allure to fire. Don't we all have that it's on some level? You have to be well prepared. You have to think things through. You just don't make glass. Still, I can be mesmerized in the studio watching. In the late 70s, we got pregnant with Ian. And at that time, I was doing all kind of odd jobs, driving dump trucks. <clears throat> I was the art teacher at South Point Catholic High School. And <clears throat> I made tumblers and I made wine glasses and they were selling and so I was able to support my little family by doing that. So aha, uh -huh, that was the beginning of it. And then about 1982 or 83, after the birth of our second child, Dabney and I sat down and we said, maybe we should get serious about this glass business. I would do the books because I had babies and I was at home with babies, but I was the bookkeeper for this little business that was growing, but starting in a very simple way. We made a list of all the things that we wanted to accomplish and the needs for our family. It was kind of a, a pact that we would, as a family, support this business and just see how far we could take it. I used to put wings on everything, and that's kind of a, a Philibon signature piece. I've, I've, I've done this um, pattern we call the reptilian pattern, which is, it looks like snake skin. To work the glass, you have to respect the glass. You have to be careful, but not too careful. You have to be willing to take chances, but not make foolish moves. We love to travel. We love to eat. We love to read. Uh, we used to hike a lot. It's hard for him to hike now, but um, we used to like to go out and to Sabino and to Mount Lemon. Last spring, my wife was noticing things like tremors and speech patterns changing. It was concerning to me, but I didn't qu quite know how to label it or I, I had no idea what was going on. So we uh, went to uh, neurologists and uh, in the spring of last year, um, they diagnosed me with Parkinson's disease. We both just went, okay, what do we do now? Let's go. <clears throat> it's having an effect on my ability to blow glass and to run the business. and. So I'm scaling my life down a little bit and taking on a new role in the world. <clears throat> but I'm determined to make the best of it, so I'm exercising like a crazy man, and I work out about two to three hours a day, trying to recreate the dopamine that my brain is not producing. This is a challenge, but my goodness, there are so many people that have greater challenges. So I just want to make the most of it, and I don't want to get anywhere close to being sucked down into its negativity. Not a chance. I want to power up, as Tom would say. <laughs> but here's what's cool. Here's the effort, God. Here you are making. Right, this piece. I'm looking forward to things like I'm going to play hooky today. I'm going to, I never play hooky. I never like go to a man-made to movies, you know, or have a beer in the afternoon. You know what I mean? Just doing, doing something on a whim because everything is like got, got the work to do, got to do some more drawings, got to plan ahead, you know. So I, I want to loosen up my life.